Welcome to this series of Mindset Kabanga Educator videos on Grade 5 Natural Science. My name is Risho Kechwi. One of the commonly held ideas about teaching the sciences is that you cannot achieve much without expensive equipment. Certainly, it is wonderful to have microscopes, electrical apparatus, lots of chemicals, models and charts. But a great deal of hands-on science can be done using simple everyday materials. You'll be introduced to learner-centered activities which do not require expensive equipment. Teachers will be encouraged to get learners involved in the collection and housing of such materials so that the learners develop a sense of ownership of their science center. My guest today is Barbara Thorne. Barbara, welcome. Hello, Richard Kitchu. <laughs> Barbara has many years of experience in the teaching of natural science. Her experience includes three years of primary school teaching, 12 years teaching at high school, and 16 years in a college of education with a focus on the intermediate or senior phase. She has also worked for non-government organizations with a strong focus on teacher development. In addition, she has co-authored a number of textbooks and workbooks for use in intermediate and senior school phases. Her main interest at present is the development of scientific skills and concepts in the intermediate and senior phases. Bob, my question. Science always seems to be special. A special place like a laboratory, everyone wears a white coat and fancy equipment. It all looks so intimidating. Unfortunately, that is a very commonly held view. It's almost a stereotype. <laughs> of science and scientists. What we want to do is to get our learners to understand that science is an everyday activity pursued by ordinary people who make mistakes. Everybody can be a scientist. And to that end, we sometimes deliberately move away from fancy equipment. It's a way of showing our learners that even when we make a cup of tea, we're doing science. But Bob, it's very easy to talk about alternatives. Where do we get these alternatives? These alternatives are actually all around us. Mm. We have to be environmentally friendly. We have to reuse junk. And in fact, some of the alternatives are free of charge. Well, this sounds quite exciting. We're going to look at examples of free materials and also at some useful recycled alternatives. Once again, we need to go back to our classroom situation and let's look at the free stuff first. These learners are working outdoors. It feels hard, rough, but it breaks so easily. It is not possible to teach life sciences well without spending some time outside. And they build their nest very quickly. Oh, there's one there. This group does not have telescopes. It's not always easy to see stars in the city because of the additional light. But if you wait half an hour, your eyes get used to it and you can see some of the stars. The moon with its changing shapes is quite easily visible. Of course, if we study sand and soil, it's almost everywhere for the taking. Soil, actually, is it good for seed planting? The soil is but like really don't wreck someone's veggie patch. Really good for planting. Now, let's take a look at some of the environmentally friendly stuff. Oh, mine is looking good. Oh, 
gold, chip cups and mugs. We can easily make a collection from our homes. We can also borrow different cups from our parents and then return them. Styrofoam containers are all over. Magnets need to be bought, but scrap metal is easily obtainable. Look around our own homes. See the aluminium? One can use beans for sorting. You buy them once and keep them in an airtight container and use them again and again. Push the train up of the hill. One can borrow toys or use marbles. The plank you can pick up. And if you want to discuss friction, you can use a scratchy stone from the yard. This is zigzag cutting. Look, that one's straight. It's an electric circuit. Some of these things must be bought, like batteries. But we've saved so much, it's okay. It's not working when you switch off. Okay, the ice. It's a good idea to collect old bottles. They are very useful. One can also use old jam or peanut butter bottles from home, as well as ice. Let's look at some other examples. Free soil and old bottles. Almost free seeds. One can eat or sell the produce if you watch your plants carefully. You can eat the food brought from home. This is a very nice alternative to a commercially produced globe. Get the kids to draw Africa on the ball. One can also use some recycled stuff. The dropper, an old tile, or some rock samples. Well, that gave us something to think about. It was quite fun. Maybe we can ask our learners to think of alternatives and even make some apparatus. Bob, what did you bring? Well, let's have a look. I'd love to know how many of these are just filling up landfills and not being reused as they can. A cool drink bottle, very useful. We can cut off the top, turn it upside down and use it as a funnel. The lower part, very useful for carrying water, stones, and even we can use it as a rain gauge. Other things that one can get which are free or almost free, medicine bottles from the pharmacy, go and ask your friends for their empty pill bottles, remove the label, and it can be a useful container for sugar or salt, which you can use over and over again for dissolving experiments. Mm. These styrofoam things, it's almost impossible to buy anything that isn't packed in styrofoam. However, you could use it when you're talking net science, use it as a boat, use it as a dish, use it as a container. They can be used over and over again. And in doing that, we're obeying the principle of reduce, reuse, recycle. We must be environmentally friendly. How about this, for example? I don't know how many people's post boxes are filled with what I call junk mail. <laughs> Mine as well. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's very handy. Remember the uh, balanced diet activity? That's where it comes in very handy. Learners can cut out pictures of food, make a collage, 
things we get from animals and plants. Any other pieces of junk mail, we can cut out pictures of electrical appliances, energy changes, energy transfer. Pictures of equipment, kitchenware, there we have matter and materials. The uses are endless. If we don't recycle our old peanut butter or jam bottles, they make very handy beakers where we can simply mark off the volume on the side and use it again and again. The advantage there is that the learners then are not given something that's made for them. They have to measure and accurately record. So not only are they making their own equipment and developing a sense of ownership, they're learning science skills as well. The food we buy from breakfast cereals to jams to all sorts of drinks and beverages. Look at the back. The nutritional information mm. will tell you what sugar, etc., is in the is in the product. The examples are endless. Thank you very much, Barbara, for joining me here in studio. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. So you see, there is no such thing as rubbish. We have looked at a few examples of free and recycled science materials. One of the really positive things about recycling is that as an environmentally aware science teacher, you are practicing what you preach and not throwing things away unnecessarily. Well, that's all we have time for today. Until next time, Risho Ketri. Goodbye.